Hey guys, here we are. This is the uh, very first of my video series dealing with Photoshop. And we're going to start off with uh, something that a lot of people typically just skip over or uh, don't talk about until much later. Instead, we're going to start with that. And I believe it's really important that you understand how to set Photoshop up to run on your own computer. Make sure that it's very efficient and uh, it will also help you have a little better understanding of what's under the hood and that will come in very handy later on if you run into problems, especially dealing with performance as well as uh, dealing with screen real estate on your monitor or laptop. Uh, as you can see, I'm not going to cover everything down to uh, the very minute detail. There, there's really no point because there's a lot of options that you may never use or there's options that really don't relate to the type of work that you're going to be doing. Instead, I'm going to keep it general and uh, really just go over the main tools, the main settings that you will constantly use or may constantly use. So with that in mind, I'm going to move this over to the uh, other monitor and we're going to get started. Okay. Now, once you open Photoshop up, you're going to be greeted with one or one of two uh, possibilities here. It may be set to uh, open up with the work screen visible or the learn screen visible. Usually if you've used Photoshop previously, it's going to show you uh, images that you've opened up. Uh, again, this could be changed in the settings. It may look like this if you have it uh, set to list view. I typically leave mine to just uh, image preview. Um, if you're using Creative Cloud files or you have files stored on your Creative Cloud, this is where they'll show up, previews of those, and the same with uh, Lightroom photos. Take a look at the, uh, the learn option next to work here. This is going to give you some really nice videos to look at that are explained very well. Uh, if you're new to Photoshop, definitely take a look. If you've been using Photoshop for a while, but you're just coming back, these will really help get you caught up. Uh, there, and you know, it, it, it won't hurt. Even if you've been using this for years, it always helps to take a look and see what new things are added or possibly some new techniques that you're not aware of. That almost covers everything on the uh, opening of Photoshop. You'll see up here there's a little icon. That's my Creative Cloud account. That's letting me know that, hey, you know, this belongs to me. This is my account. It's going to have things that I've stored in my Creative Cloud, uh, my libraries, things like that. Uh, there is a search function. So if we type in stuff, uh, what's it going to do? Is it going to search online? Is it going to search my computer well it's actually looking in Adobe stock and it also gives you some tutorial choices if you're not sure how to use something let's say uh, pen tool we'll type that in and it's going to give me some stock images to choose from but it's also going to give me some tutorials to look at as well so that's a very nice feature uh, a lot of people aren't aware of that uh, but it's there to use. I would strongly recommend using that as uh, your own personal tutor. Uh, once you're done, just go ahead and click on exit search. Before we even get to opening a file, whatever, we're going to play around with the preferences. So let's go to edit and down here at the very bottom preferences, click on the word and that'll leave this open for you if you click it and just click on general. Okay, so like I said, we're not going to cover everything, just the, the big ones, so to speak. Um, you're going to want to leave these pretty much the, the way I have it set up. Uh, Color Picker is Adobe. You don't want to use Window. Uh, it could be different on a Mac, I'm sure it is. Uh, HUD, color, uh, HUD Color Picker. I usually leave mine to Hue Will. And we'll see what that does uh, here in just a moment image interpolation uh, I usually leave it I'm not sure if this is default I've already made changes to mine uh, mine set 
set to uh, bicubic, best for smooth gradients. Um, you can always change this later, uh, and as you're going to see in the technology preview, there's another option we can use. Now, if you've used Photoshop in the past, and you don't like this screen that pops up here, you can turn that off here. So that way, when you start Photoshop, it's more of like the original before the Creative Cloud came around. Uh, you're not going to see uh, start workspace, uh, these types of things. This is going to open straight into Photoshop. I leave it like that just so I can pick uh, these options here. So I'm going to go ahead and set that back. Um, export clipboard, leave that checked. Uh, always create smart objects when placing. You definitely want that checked. Uh, you know, smart objects are really nice. Uh, they're very useful. You, you may not like it, especially later on once you figure out the nuances of it. You, you just may not like it. Uh, but I believe by default that's checked. Uh, skip transform when placing. Eh, that's up to you. Uh, if it's checked or not, it really doesn't matter because you have resize image during place. I leave that unchecked. Uh, and I leave this unchecked. And that's for when you import or bring in an image and apply it to the current uh, canvas that you're working on. It's, it affects that. So really there's not a whole lot in here we're going to be changing. Interface. Uh, really the only thing you need to be aware of is that you can change your interface color. I, I prefer mine darker. Uh, you may like yours, depending on the contrast of your monitor or your environment, set that up the way you like. Uh, the uh, screen modes, I would suggest leaving those default for now. Uh, we can always change it later. It's not going to really affect uh, the work you're doing, so to speak. All right, workspace. Um, not a whole lot going on there, so we'll just we'll just uh, avoid that one for now. Tools. Uh, you're going to want to make sure, especially if you're new to Photoshop, that show tool tips and use rich tool tips if that option is available. Make sure those are turned on. That's uh, really helpful because if you leave your mouse over a tool. Uh, it may not do it because I'm in the uh, settings here. Yeah, it's not going to do it right now. Uh, what will happen is it will pop up a small animation to give you a preview of how that tool works. Very useful. Uh, enable gestures. Uh, you know, if you're using a touch screen or a press, uh, touch pad, you could turn that on. I don't use either of those because it's just really annoying. I don't use it so I leave it unchecked. Uh, shift key for tool switch. Definitely leave that turned on and that'll become more evident. Over scroll, don't worry about. Enable flick panning. Turn that crap off. Uh, it's really annoying. What happens is when you're scrolling it'll just continue to scroll on its own afterwards. Again that's more towards uh, or more for people who use uh, touch sensitive screens or tablets. Um, double click, yeah, you want that, that, so these three are checked. Animated zoom, sure, if your uh, computer has a, graph, a GPU card that supports that, go ahead and turn that on. Uh, the rest of these I personally don't use. History log, we're not going to worry about that. File handling. Um, not a whole lot, just leave all that. Really, the most important thing here is automatically recover. Uh, what that does is it saves a version of your work or your project that you're doing every 10 minutes. That's really useful, especially uh, you know if you're working on something that's very large and you're prone to crashes or, or maybe you're working on a laptop and you're always running out of power for some reason uh, this is really important to have uh, make sure that's checked it can save your butt uh, when you really really need it camera raw uh, not so many changes there export uh, 
I'm not really concerned about this. We can talk about it later, but uh, it's kind of good to know that there is a quick export uh, option. In other words, it's just a, a, a quick way of saving out your file to a specified format. Okay, performance. This is the big one. Uh, at the top up here, this is your available RAM. This is the memory. It's important that you guys understand that uh, RAM or memory is completely different than your hard drive. They both use the same type of measurement, such as gig, terabyte, megabyte. They both use the same measurement, but they're totally different. One is storage, and one is basically, uh, gosh, what, what would you call that? Your uh, the engine of your computer, you know, that depends on how fast it's going to go. It stores temporary. It's not a permanent storage device like a hard drive. Uh, let Photoshop use, and I'm basically, I'm telling it I wanted to use 75% of my available RAM. Now, it's not going to use that automatically. It's not going to just say, boom, I'm sucking up all the RAM. It's saying Photoshop is going to get to that point where it uses up to uh, 22 gig of the uh, 29 that's available. If you've got 8 gig or you've got 4 gig, you're probably going to see something more like this, where it's uh, 50 or below. Um, that's fine. Just make sure that you don't, do not set it all the way. Uh, the reason for that is uh, when you start working on a complex file that's very large, then Photoshop is going to say, oh, you've, you've allocated this much memory and I'm going to use all of it up to that point. It's very rare that you would work solely in Photoshop alone. Uh, sometimes you're going to have a web browser open. Sometimes you'll have a reference image open. Uh, I mean, there could be a lot of other applications running in the background, so you want to make sure that there's enough memory to have these uh, applications running in the background if, if you do use those, which you most likely will be. Uh, the rest of this stuff, just leave it as default. Uh, graphics processor settings. If you have a, uh, a usable graphics card or GPU, this is where it'll show up. Uh, it's basically going to greatly increase the speed or the redraw of Photoshop. In other words, when you scroll through an image, when you zoom, when you paint, when you apply specific effects, this is going to speed it up dramatically. So if you do have this option, make sure it's checked. Don't worry about advanced. Just make sure this is use graphics processor is turned on. Sometimes if you're using a uh, older laptop, this option may not be available to you depending on your graphics card. All right, scratch disk. This is basically where Photoshop uh, will swap information. In other words, um, if it runs out of memory, if it's doing something that's very large and it needs extra space to swap files back and forth, uh, all this stuff happens in the background, you're most likely not going to be aware of it. But you're going to want to have uh, at least one hard drive by default will be set for you, and that's C. That's your system drive. Uh, it, it Maybe it's different depending on your custom setup. But uh, for me, I have it set to both of my uh, SSD uh, hard drives. One is C, the other is F. And I use that because they're my fastest hard drives in my uh, current setup, you're always going to want it to be uh, set to your fastest hard drive. And that's typically going to be an SSD or a solid state drive. If you don't have that, then by all means, go ahead and assign another drive to it, especially if you've got the space. Um, Photoshop will use that to swap information back and forth, especially if it's trying to calculate something very intense. It's really important that you have as much space available for that. Okay, cursors. Uh, I leave mine set to full-size brush tip. Uh, you can change yours as you choose, uh, but for the most part, just leave it as is, transparency and gamut. 
uh, I don't want to change that. Units. This basically sets up the uh, default units for uh, measurements for rulers, things like that. I work in inches, so I leave mine in inches. Type, I leave in point. Um, everything else, I leave the same. Guides, grids, and slices. Don't worry about it. We're not going to get into that stuff uh, right away. Plugins, don't worry about it. We're not going to do anything there. Type, nope, nothing's going to change there. 3D, no, just leave that as is. And finally, uh, technology preview. These are some pretty cool things. Uh, check here often, as sometimes if there's been a small update to uh, Photoshop, whatever, they may add in other previews for you to look at. Uh, I have uh, preserve detail and enable paint symmetry turned on. You do not, you absolutely do not have to have these enabled. Uh, actually, I, uh, if you do have this option for technology preview, I suggest that uh, you don't use those because there's always a chance that uh, something could happen. It could cause Photoshop to crash. It could uh, corrupt your file. I would just, uh, if you're not comfortable or you're new to Photoshop, just leave them turned off. There's a good chance that uh, we're not going to be using this stuff right away anyway. All right, guys. So that's basic uh, understanding of the preferences for Photoshop. Really, your, your big one's going to be your performance. And uh, like I said, you're going to want to set your memory to something that's reasonable, not 100%, anywhere from 50 to 75. If you've got more than 8 gigs of RAM, and that's what we're looking at up here, I have, uh, looks like 29 uh, gig available. And I'm assigning 75% of that to Photoshop uh, as a reserve, that's what it can use. Um, if you've got 8 gig, you're probably going to want to do a sign like maybe 50%, or if you're brave, go up to 75. Just keep in mind that uh, you know the more RAM you assign to Photoshop, the more it's going to use. It's very greedy, it's very RAM hungry. Uh, when you start to do a lot of editing, it's going to use that, and you're going to see it as your system slows down. Actually, I should say, if you did make changes, all right, if you made changes here, if you made changes to your performance or scratch disk or anything like that, go ahead and hit OK. It'll save it. And every time you open Photoshop, it'll remember those settings. Um, I'm not going to. I've got mine set up already, so I'll just, I'm going to close it here. OK, here we are. Um, so what I'm going to do is I have a file that uh, you guys will have access to. I'll put it on my website or somewhere you guys can download it. All right, so let's look at our interface here. Chances are your interface does not look like this. Uh, and that's good because this is a little more custom setup. What I want you guys to do is uh, under window, you have these options for uh, workspace. And you can set those up however you like. You can create your own workspace and save that. You can also create your own keyboard shortcuts, custom menus, all that stuff can be customized to your liking to what works best for you and your workflow. But for this series, what we're going to do is we're just going to stick with essentials. So uh, make sure that's checked. All right? And if nothing happens, not a problem just click on reset essentials and you should now have something similar to what uh, my screen is this libraries option over here I want to click these little double arrows to collapse and there we go now we got a little more screen real estate uh, file menu or text menu I'm sure you guys are familiar with that if you use software in the past a lot of what's available here in this menu or these menus can be found uh, visually through an icon, a tool, or even in the uh, palettes themselves over here. The majority of what you can find up here, not everything, but a large majority will be found throughout your interface.
in icon format. And I will do my best to show you guys, you know, where you'll find it here, where you'll find it in, in your palettes or your other area of your interface, as well as quick keys. So let's look at the interface itself. By default, we're in a tabbed view, which means uh, Photoshop takes your image or your document you're working on, uh, displays it full screen in a tab. So if we had multiple images, we would have multiple tabs. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's open up uh, this thing. And as you can see, we have this image now and this image. And that's by default, uh, tabbed view. You click the little X and that will close that window or control or command W. The majority of what you see on your interface can be moved and positioned elsewhere. So if we look at our toolbar, uh, we'll see it too has these little arrows and that, that allows us to collapse or expand that palette or that uh, tool menu. I, I, I call them palettes. I don't care what you call them. It doesn't matter. No, one, no one's going to grill you about the name of a specific thing in Photoshop. Maybe a tool or something like that. But this stuff, it doesn't matter. If you just say, it's up there next to that, or it's under the text menu, or it can be found over here under swatches. You know, as long as you know the general idea and, and know where to find it, you're good. The names, the proper identification, all that crap, that'll come later. Don't, don't sweat it. Don't worry about it right now. What we're looking at is how to uh, customize our uh, interface. So what I'm going to do is take my uh, tool menu, my tool palette. I'll bring it over and you'll see that a blue line appears. And that's letting me know that, hey, you can dock to this side. So once I let off my uh, mouse button, it's now stuck to that side. If I left click and drag out, you'll see that Photoshop's smart enough to know, hey, that menu doesn't work horizontally. It's, it's basically a vertical menu. So it'll only snap to uh, a place where it can uh, stack up vertically. So, you know, here, uh, maybe even over here, it's not gonna work too well because I have dual monitors. There we go, I got it to work. All right. So it's not just that tool. Uh, you can pretty much take anything such as the options panel or the options ribbon um, and it's a horizontal so it's only going to let you stack it guess what one place and that's there uh, the others other menus other items other palettes uh, let's see where we can stack those up they're just about anywhere you know you're, you're uh, you just really got to uh, play around with it, find out where you like your stuff to be, where you want it to be, and position it there. It's not permanent. Don't worry if you screw something up or if you accidentally close something. All you got to do is say, hey, reset essentials, and you're back to where uh, everything started. So I, I suggest taking a couple of moments and play around, you know, find out how this works become more familiar with it take your time uh, because this is your environment this is where you're going to be working so it's important that you understand where things are it's important that you understand how to hide them how to show them uh, and you know what works best for you maybe you're uh, left-handed and you're used to having your tools accessible uh, over here on the right or maybe you just like everything stacked up on the right. You know, whatever you like. Totally up to you. For me, I prefer to have it uh, a little wide and kind of set off up here. Because I, I, do, I do move things around a lot as I'm working. I don't typically leave stuff set up static like this. Um, the other thing is if you hit your tab, T-A-B, uh, if you hit your tab key on your keyboard, that will hide your interface completely. It's, you know, it's not deleting it, it's just hiding it. So you hit tab again, and it comes back. Uh, the other options are screen modes. If you hit F, as in uh, Fox or Frank, that's going to cycle through the different screen modes. And this is basically full screen, 
which allows me to move my uh, canvas, this big red square here, uh, enables me to move that around, which is useful if I'm working up close and I need to, you know, paint or do some manipulation up here or whatever. All right, hit F one more time. That brings you into presentation mode, which is just a black background, no interface. If you hit tab while in that mode, you can now work with a black background instead of the uh, default gray. All right, so now we're back to tabbed view. These can also be uh, cycled through this button here. Change screen mode and it gives you a uh, F it shows you that that's the hotkey and if you just left click and hold you can select it here yeah screen mode you can be found up here under view screen mode there uh, I've always just used F to cycle through much quicker Now that you should be a little familiar with your interface, you should know what you can move, what you can't move, uh, how to stack things up, how to reset it. Uh, let's talk about how to actually navigate. So we have the hand tool and we have the magnify tool or the zoom tool. Uh, the hand tool is what we use to uh, basically grab the image and move around. We're not actually moving content. We're just moving uh, the actual canvas itself. Now you'll notice in tabbed view, I can't move. That's because it's stuck to the boundary of the workspace. If I hit F and I'm in full screen, now I can move this around. And you know, as I said, it's really nice to be able to uh, do this if you're working up close. Right? And that's with the hand tool. Uh, the zoom tool, uh, let's go back to hand tool in one second. You'll see that uh, this is the uh, nice little animated uh, rich tool tip here. And also H for hand tool. You'll see that it's highlighted there. Uh, the magnifying or the zoom tool, Z for zoom. And you'll see that in the center, of that is a plus that means if I click and drag left or right that's my animated zoom that was an option we can turn on in our preferences you'll see that uh, it's pretty smooth if I move to the left it zooms out if I move to the right it zooms in if I move up nothing really going to happen it's basically left or right all right keep that in mind The other option is if you have a tool selected, so I, I currently have the uh, zoom tool. If I hold down the space key, it will temporarily switch over to the hand tool. Now that's really useful, especially when you're working with multiple tools. So I'll just hold down the hand tool and I can just scroll around on my image. I let up and I'm back to my zoom tool. Hand tool by holding down the space bar again. Uh, let's say that you're working with uh, crop. All right. And let's say that I want to crop in here. If I go to zoom tool, it's going to say, hey, you're switching tools do you want to apply that no I just want to zoom in well you, obviously you can't click on anything because it tries to apply it so that's where the hotkey comes in if you hold down control and spacebar all right I believe that's command and spacebar on the Mac but uh, control and spacebar at both keys at the same time that's going to give you your uh, zoom tool the other option is, oops, if you hold down Alt, and if you have a mouse wheel, scroll back, that'll zoom in. 
scroll forward, uh, sorry, scroll forward, that'll zoom in, scroll back, that'll zoom out. And of course, if we hit our space bar, that will allow us to scroll the image or pan the image around. So those are really important. It's good to uh, practice that. So again, that is spacebar for the uh, hand tool. And alt and middle mouse wheel or mouse, uh, yeah, mouse wheel. Or control space and left mouse button. Just click and drag left or right. All right. If you're not familiar or you're, you just don't have a habit of uh, using these keys, you will over time. It's really important that you know these because otherwise you're going to limit yourself to um, pretty much being stuck at this size and being like, well, boy, I really hope that's it. And then accept. And it's like, oh, hell, you know, now I, you know, I didn't want that in there. So, you know, it's really important that you understand how to use uh, the quick keys or the, the uh, hidden quick keys, if you will, to uh, navigate around. Let's talk about uh, a little more of the menu here. This option bar or option ribbon, whatever you want to call it, it will change depending on the tool that you have selected. Now that's not all the options available to that tool. It's really just the, the main options or the options that are uh, typically used. So you'll see for the hand tool, it just says uh, scroll all windows, 100%, fit screen, fill screen. All right, zoom tool kind of has the same thing, but zoom all windows, that's if you have multiple windows or multiple uh, uh, projects open. Scrubby zoom, not really sure what scrubby zoom is. That's what that is, that's the uh, animated zoom type thing. If that's turned off, then you're going to have this, where it draws a selection and zooms in. I'll leave it turned on. Now you're going to notice your tools have a tiny little arrow at the bottom right corner. That tells you that there are additional tools beneath the main tool. So if you left click and hold, you'll see that there is another tool under the move tool. The selection marquee tool has additional tools as well. Um, even the brush tool, different tools. You'll also notice that it tells you exactly what the hotkeys are for that tool. So for move, we have V as in Victor, so if I'm working with, say, my brush tool, and I hit V, then it's going to select whatever tool I have uh, currently uh, selected there, which is the Move tool. If you go B for brush, it'll select that tool. Now, if I left click and I have, say, Mixer Brush selected, and I go back and I use my Move tool or Hand tool or, you know, whatever, and I hit B, it's not going to go back to the brush tool. It's going to go back to whatever I have selected currently inside this little stack right here. You know, if you don't use that a lot or you're wondering why you're getting the wrong tool by pressing the hotkey, that could be why. Just make sure that uh, the tool that you want to use is selected here. Now you'll remember in the settings we had the option for uh, using shift. So if I hit Shift B, as in Bravo, I'm holding down Shift and I'm tapping the B key, you'll see that it will cycle through all of the uh, tools associated to that hotkey. All right, it's happening here. All right, uh, same, and that's for all of these tools. All right, if I hit Shift V, as in Victor, you'll see that it switches between the Move tool and the Artboard tool. Uh, Shift M for Marquee tool. That's going to allow me to switch between the two main, which is Circle and Square. 
uh, lasso tool, shift L. All right, I can cycle through all the different tools for the lasso. So that's what that option was that we talked about at the beginning. For those of you that are a little more advanced or more familiar with Photoshop, you do have the option to edit your toolbar. If you just click on that and select edit toolbar, that's going to allow you to remove any kind of tool that you don't use uh, on a normal basis. Uh, so I just slice tool, I just click and drag that over. I rarely use that. That's typically for uh, web pages, things like that. Note tool, ruler tool, count tool. Uh, don't use that. Don't use red eye. I rarely ever use pencil tool. Uh, so I think you get the idea. You know, once you take tools that you don't use, drag them over. If you use a different hotkey for your tools, just click there and assign a uh, different hotkey to it. Uh, if you're new to Photoshop, just leave this stuff alone. Uh, you can click on Restore Defaults. But for those of you that want to customize it, if I click Done, uh, you'll see that a lot of the tools that I did have there are now gone. So the Slice tool, I believe, was under um, the Eyedropper tool. Uh, it should be gone now, yeah. They're not deleted, they're just hidden down here. So if you want to get them back, uh, you can do that. Oops, let's go back to that. C for crop, that's where the slice tool is at. All right, so let's go back to edit toolbar and I'm going to restore defaults. Uh, to give you guys an idea of what that would look like, I'm going to go to one of my setups and you can see that net uh, this bar is way different. All right, it's very few tools, uh, just the tools that I'd normally use for when I'm painting. That's all that's there. So it's a little less clutter. Uh, if I'm if I'm looking for something, I can easily go to it and pick it directly. I can take tools that are nested inside, such as the brush tool and the mixer brush tool, and I can have those separate. And I can still access those by Shift B. Or not. I'm hitting the wrong button, that's why. There we go. Now, keep in mind that it's going to cycle through all the tools. All right? It's not just going to keep these two tools here. It's going to cycle through all of them. You know, If they're hidden or whatever, it's going to find them and cycle through those. So that's why I just typically just click on it like this. Okay, so let's go back to Essentials. And reset essentials. All right. All right, guys. Uh, this is it. Hopefully, the next time I get to do this, my uh, cold will be gone and I won't sound like some kind of uh, snotty monster. So, thanks for watching. If you like it, please subscribe, hit a like, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.